Good evening, everyone, and what a special and beautiful evening this is. Uh, we are celebrating 51 years of writing of one of uh, our most loved and one of our greatest uh, poets, you know, springing from the Indian <coughs> soil, uh, one of the legends of Indian English poetry, uh, Jayant Mahapatra. And we are more than grateful to be able to have a wonderful galaxy of scholars and students who are most importantly lovers of the great poet. They are academics, they are scholars, they are critics, they are friends. They are uh, unconscious and uh, informal mentees of this wonderful poet. And what is more significant is that we are all fans here to celebrate a major poet his life and his writing. The Heart Within is extremely grateful to all of you for consenting to join us for this evening. We have a wonderful audience and we hope to make the best of it. Uh, to carry on the evening forward, I would invite uh, Professor Jadeep Sarangi to deliver the formal address. Of welcome to Thank our scholars. Over to you, Jadeep, sir. Thank you. Uh, it's a very special, heart-touching, heartwarming evening because we are celebrating 51 years of uh, Jayanta Mahapatra's uh, wonderful, wonderful creation. Indian English poetry at the beginning was mostly Mumbai center. And Jayanta Mahapatra was the first man who championed uh, the local and championed the cause of uh, making India, Indian English poetry close to the heart of India and it it has become part and parcel of the living totality of the Indians. Arrived in the um, poetry scene quite late, 38 by the year, that is in 1971, the very important thing about Jayanta Mahapatra's arrival before that, Indian English poetry was uh, 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 evident, but could not make its ground uh, 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 as in the global scenario. But if we look into the 1970s, very interestingly, in the later part of the 1970s, we find Jayanta Mahapatra already traveled so many countries, read poetry in so many places, including the Arts Literary Festival held in Adelaide. And uh, one of the interviews with me, Jayanta Mahapatra says that, you know, these early makings, these early associations with the global poets made an inroad to the Indian poetry in English to the global parameters and also interaction with Eddie Hope that he narrates in, uh, in his beautiful residence in Canberra. And what is very important about in 1970s is, uh, is the visibility of Indian English poetry in the most prominent journals of the world. And uh, Jayanta Mahapatra is someone who not only uh, is of course the maker, early makers of Indian English poetry, but also the caregiver for so many, so many poets. Poets actually, he used to edit, edit the journal called Chandrabhaga, and so many poets from the north, northeast, like Rabina Sangam and many others, got the platform to flourish themselves. And they came out and saying, without Jayanta Mahapatra, they couldn't have been a poet. So the Jayanta Mahapatra is not only the poet of the country, but also the soul and the maker, soul maker of different poets who really built up Indian English poetry on solid platforms. Mahapatra's prose is a lyrical, it's wonderful prose. And uh, Door of Paper, when we read Door of Paper, it opens up different doors at our heart and freedom of poetry. And poetry is something through which he expresses his freedom. And uh, Jayanta Mahapatra, by the time we attained 2000, year 2001 or so, he became a global globe, uh, globe trotter in delivering lectures on poetry, read poetry in different spheres, different time zones, and mesmerized by his lyrical flows for the keynote addresses and different platforms as well. We remember Michelle Van Murley, uh, Professor Murley is there, uh, uh, actually in GX conference in Pandicherry, where I think Jayantada and we all stayed for a long, long time. And on a very personal note, I am blessed that my daughter's name is given by Jayantada. 
and uh, so it's the one it's Jan the Mahapatra is not only a poet of uh, who is uh, I think the inspiration for generations and who stands for India India in a sense that India not only in the metro cities but also India shines to villages India shines to small cities and towns like Kotak like uh, something like that he championed that and uh, we all know the relationship the where the a collection for or a long poem for which he got the coveted Sites Academy Award for the first time as a poet from India. And that is a wonderful achievement. And uh, look at the pedigree that he has and his biography, his, uh, 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 his pro writings, his Odia writings, his translations. And the man is a, with a mission, man with a heart of India. And true Indian is his strength in the uh, his Uriya tongue, his strength in the second language, English, and he he was telling me that he taught he was taught by the Australian uh, teachers at the very early stage of life, and that gave him a very good insight into English vocabulary, and which is quite rare. And also he was a physicist and a physics professor, so precision of words, economy expressions, like a scientist. So he, he was a brain of everything. He was, I, I will say, the confluence of different cultures, traditions, and linguistic resources. I welcome all honorable speakers who will be enlightening us and who, have, who are taking the calls forward from different parts of India. You made this evening really, really special. Thank you. I bow my head down to all who will be speaking on Jayantada. Speaking on Jayantada is not something that you uh, that is a cerebral exercise only. It is it is through which we liberate our own emotions. We connect our emotions with whatever uh, that contributes to our living totality. I thank also the very important part of this particular program this evening is uh, uh, the students and scholars who will be reciting Janta Mahapatra's poetry from different parts of India because they are the builders of the nation and they are the builders of poetry union, poetry for social change, the idea of movement that Jayantada uh, actually uh, dreamed of. So for taking this forward, I, I really express my heartfelt thanks and cheers for poetry and poetry is the spirit of survival. Let's, uh, let's enjoy it, let's celebrate it. I will end uh, with, um, with uh, a few words by Jayanta Mahapatra that uh, Jayantada has written. He can't be on online mode because he is too old and he is not well. He is presiding these days. He has written, look at how lyrically he has written uh, to read out these sentences uh, in this August gathering. It's poetry that makes me live on. It's poetry that makes me feel and love the person beside me. It's poetry that makes me feel and love the person beside me. It has given me that opportunity to love others. Really, Jayantada, you gave us an opportunity to live with poetry, to dream with poetry, to have freedom and connect with others through poetry. Thank you, each and everyone present one, present here, and 74 attendants for poetry and Jayantada is that we are carrying the image forward. Thank you. Over to Vashudara. Thank you, sir, for that very eloquent uh, welcome, also for that very eloquent introduction uh, to the evening and to the, you know, gigantic person, the many-headed, many-sided, many-minded person that we are celebrating today. And to carry on the celebration forward, we have a series of discussions uh, with poets, scholars, uh, you know, who have been living with and through Jant Mahapatra's poetry for many, many years now, who have, uh, you know, absorbed from it and who have given to it by their critical analysis by their mentoring of other junior poets. And we hope to you know, have a vast canvas of experiences uh, with Jayant Mahapatra revealed today. 
Uh, so I would next invite Professor Ashwini Kumar, who is poet first and then anything else. But he's many things. He's political scientist. He's a development planner. Uh, most importantly, he is a visionary uh, who works to bring uh, the poetic method into everyday praxis. Uh, thank you, Ashwini, sir, for consenting to join us. And it is over to you for your wonderful words. Uh, thank you, Vasu. Uh, wonderful, um, you know, again, talking to you. And uh, I, I'm really grateful to both of you, Professor Jayadeep Sarangi and you for organizing this wonderful treat, poetic treat for all of us. Uh, remembering, you know, Jantada, uh, Jantada's works uh, uh, for us uh, uh, is a primal experience. And uh, for many years, we know Jantada. And in fact, when I was in Jamshedpur, I told you that I regret being here because I missed out on, uh, you know, like uh, being part of Jantada's uh, release of Puriya autobiography. Um, I, I work across the different language landscapes, you know, partly uh, a, a tribute to Jantada's works and presence in the Indian literature. I mean, I, I look at Jantada very broadly. I just don't look at Jantada or Janta Babu or Janta Mahapatra narrowly, you know, just in a poetic area. So let me, um, you know, what I have done uh, within my limited sense of engagement uh, with this uh, uh, program. So I'm going to say a few words about uh, Janta Mahapatra, Janta Mahapatra's uh, poetic works. Uh, his poems are with us all the time. And um, I keep extending since morning. I was telling Murliji that uh, Janta has been sending love and affection. That Ashwini, you love us so much. You love me so much. Perhaps I don't deserve that love. I, I retorted, uh, Janta, what are you saying? I, I guess uh, you being around uh, is perhaps uh, a divine gift uh, for all of us. So let me speak a few words about uh, the Janta Babu. And then uh, I would like to read a very special poem uh, for Janta Babu, a short poem, uh, which will also give you a sense of, uh, you know, the writings, the works of Janta Babu from a very different, different literary, cultural, uh, uh, you know, uh, landscapes, uh, identity landscapes, you know. Janta, Janta Mahapatra, if you, all of you know that, is widely regarded as one of the immortals of Indian literature. I'm speaking of in a broad sense of Indian literature, you know, across languages, native languages and vernacular languages, not just limited to English language, widely regarded as one of the immortals of Indian literature and practitioners of what uh, uh, Bruce King calls elite art of fugitive imagery. Janta Mahapatra or Janta Babu is the most meditative, I emphasize, most meditative and also subversive voice of a disturbing silence in world poetry, not just Indian poetry. Significantly, his concern for the dispossessed rustic, that is rare among the urbanized Indian poets writing in English, uh, marks him out as a tragic rebel, writes eminent poet and critic K. Sachidanandan about Janta Babu's poetry. And I agree with him, affectionately described uh, as a native Neruda by my friend, poet and critique and curator Ranjit Hoskate, his relationship with Indian poetry in English is defined by dream layered experiences of mythic forms of memory and elegic engagement with language, landscape and history of the virtuous water of the hidden springs of Mahanati. No wonder Janta Babu calls himself an uh, Uriya writing in English. I think that really explains a lot of, about you know, Janta Babu and Janta Babu's poetic landscape. So therefore, indisputably, Janta Mahapatra and Janta Da is the most luminous and mesmerizing poet of the primal joy of mythic adventures of sense, self, and sensuality, sacred or secular known as I call him, known as wandering yaksha of poetics, Indian poetics, I emphasize a wandering yaksha of Indian poetics, Janta, his epic, even in miniature, concealed in the frighteningly intimate mysteries of life. The universal human imagination through meandering rhythm of rain clouds reveals, regales itself 
in his verses as the renewal of our humanity with a rage and regret. It is nearly impossible to think of Indian poetry without him across generations and populations with transgressive thrills and mischievous provocation, he has quietly and delightfully invented a uniquely personal language specific to his poetry and his people in Urusa and beyond. What is striking about his poetic resonance, or what I call dhvani, dhvani in the Indian language sense, is the exceptional intensity of rasa or aesthetic enjoyment of rupture and rapture etched in our memory like the mating songs of peacock and kingfisher. Jantada, in other words, is the sublime voice of human predicament and the most versatile chronicle of adventures of languages in the Indian literature and also in the world literature. Coming back to my philosophical background, Jantha Babu, in a Heideggerian sense of dwelling, dwelling, in a Heideggerian sense of dwelling, emphasized his verses navigate us through the transcendental expansion of creative possibilities of realizing terrible and elevational elements of the sublime. Drawing on esoteric and mundane joys of everyday life, all of us are familiar with it, brain poems, paddy field poem, hunger poem, Jainta Babu's verses take us to a heightened joy in the artistic possibility of poetry as emancipatory experience, tragic or non-tragic, absorbing the sizzling heat of both the oven and season, Jantada practices what Krigard once called impossible faith for humanizing our fragmented self colluding with each other. In this process of unpacking of our string desire and identities, Jantha Babu speaks to fragility and precariousness of our existence and meditates on the illusion of chaos. In the xenophobic regimes of privatization, commodification, deregulation, and militarization all over the world. It is near impossible to speak without those qualities that distinguish humans from other predatory elements. Jantaba reminds us universal humanity and relentless search for peace more in dreams, dreams than in the flesh. Jantaba Babu's you know, poetry, poetry and his verses have enchanted everyone. Dilip Chipre, Art Parthasati, Burton Bloom, Frank Allen, John Oliver Perry, Mother Susan, Sukrita Paul Kumar, and Ranjit Oskati, among others. And let's not forget Jenta Babu's celebrated talent for epistolary magic. I often receive his letters. Uh, editor of Jenta Mahapatra, a reader, poet Durga Panda showcases a sampling of letters he received from Mina Alexander, Norma Sims, and John Oliver Perry. Unlike unhomely and culturally uprooted Baroque so-called Anglophone poetry, I'm located in Mumbai, so I don't want to you know, speak from that location, more from my migrant location, Jantha Babu's fluorescent and flamboyant verses are deeply rooted in his native world, his favorite Tinkunia Bagicha home, the ancient abode of rains, rivers, and rides. So when he speaks of all the voices, I quote him, all the voices of history, begin to speak all at once. And suddenly, archaic snow starts melting in the hills of Niamgiri. In short, the universal and local melt together in his poetry. I tell you finally a truth. Every time I receive a letter from Jayantada in his lyric calligraphic prose, I am frightened. I am frightened. Even before I have opened the envelope, my identity has been metamorphosed. I suddenly become a silk worm, devouring its own marrows, dying to born again. This is strangely unsettling at thrilling celebration of changing forms of life defines Jantada and his poetic art. So this is a wonderful uh, you know, moment when uh, I can really go back to something that I have written, and this is going to come out uh, in a global anthology. Uh, you know, we all know Jenta Babu is famous for his Puri poems and his poems located in Orissa and, uh, you know, in his native uh, place. So this poem that I'm going to read for Jenta and for all my friends here, 
you know, Thali Babu and Murli Babu and all, you know, Basu and all, all of my friends here and poet friends. Uh, this poem is very special for me. I've shared with Jain Tada. He loved this poem. And because I'm reminded of, you know, Ranjit Hoskate's work on Jain Babu, where he calls Jain Babu our Pablo Neruda. So let me come back to our Pablo Neruda and identify his distinctiveness through this poem that I've written for him. Pablo Neruda in Gaya. Gaya. There were rumors in the holy town. There were rumors in the holy town. Pablo Neruda was spotted on the ghats of Falgu River performing funeral rites for his ancestors. He arrived with ships filled with germaniums, tire and fly catcher, and hermit crabs for local villagers. Crowds of women and laborers from the sand mines gathered for a sight of his tanned, handsome looks propagating fire and rebellion. Tapping their feet and jangling their bangles, they started singing his love poems in chorus and offered him jasmine rice pudding in a copper vessel. In the yellow flames of sacrificial fire, Pablo shaved his head and hairy chest, weeping in sorrow of losing his friends in the civil war. Wrapped in the mendicant bitter leaves, he remembered his house in Madrid with crescent balconies on which the light of June slumbered like lovers in the shade. Old timers say, old timers say, or oh, after he finished all the rituals, he became one of us searching for the secret springs of the cursed river and prairie head. I can't tell you everything, friends. I can't tell you everything, friends. But I often hear Pablo's voice between memory at time. Thank you very much. Wonderful. That's fascinating. Fascinating, all encompassing about uh, a vibrant presence of Chandra. Uh, from Mumbai, to we come to the land of Jayantada, Odisha. Uh, may we invite uh, Professor Kalidash Mishra of Sambalpur, a retired professor of of Shambhalpur University to say a few words. Here, Kalidasa. Kalidasa, can you hear us? I think he just left out. That is technical. So he was. He was just here. Uh, yeah. I mean, I believe he's still here. I'll just quickly have a look. Uh, no, I think we have lost him. In that case, uh, he we will can... be back. Yeah. Yes. Can, uh, can we, we invite? Uh, can we invite Professor Murli Sibaram Krishna? Yes. And actually, is a great poet, a very veteran poet, and inspiration for many of us, and a dedicated scholar in poetry and criticism, and I had a very close contact with Jayantada. Over to Professor Murli. Yeah. Good evening, everybody. Can, uh, am I audible? Yeah, yeah, sure. This is a very special uh, uh, day for me, especially after this uh, uh, last two years of uh, total isolation and staying away from uh, uh, many of us physically. This is almost like, you know, getting back to the land as such, because the heart within, I, I really love that uh, whole concept of the heart within. And when you have given this topic of today's discussion, felicitating the great poet Jayanda Mahapatra, the landscape of return, amazing kind of, you know, the, the concept which you have made. This is the tribute to 51 sublime years of writing. 51 years of writing, well, this is like half a century, but uh, I'm sure that many of us who love poetry know that, you know, poetry is always there. Poetry has always been there. And Jayanda has actually been a poet extraordinary in several levels. You know, when uh, uh, Jayati uh, asked me to say a few words, I was just thinking, uh, wh wh what, are, what are we going to talk about? Are we going to read Jayanta's poetry or are we going to read 
the, the, the consequences of Jayanta's poetry, the, the, the kind of you know, continuity that he has established, the contacts and connections with, uh, uh, with many of us, which uh, Jayanta had uh, established. So I just thought, you know, I'll speak a few words, maybe within this 15 minutes, I'll, I'll talk about uh, this whole idea of the landscape of return uh, under three heads. The one, of course, is Jayanta, the extraordinary poet, you know, the poet who, who, who knows how to make use of words, how to bring the meaning and experience you know, inside and outside. In Tamil, we talk about Akam and Puram, you know, inside and outside, the inner world and the outer world he brings together. And Jayanta, the poet, in that aspect. And the second, uh, 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 you know, phase, uh, which I want to, uh, uh, you know, connect is Jayanta, the, the editor. Jayanta and Chandrabhaga, the journal, are intimately interlinked. In fact, many of us, I'm so happy that Professor Kalidas has also come back. Kalidas Mishra might probably remember that, you know, my first poem in Chandrabhaga appeared alongside Kalidas Mishra's too. I think it was your first poem also in uh, yeah, Chandrabhaga. Those were, those were good old days in 80, in 79, 80, 81. You know, I just picked up the whole old Chandrabhagas. And it's an extraordinary effect, you know. Uh, I mean, the whole uh, uh, connection that he has been, uh, Jayanta has been able to uh, establish and bring out poetry, uh, ruminants, uh, you know, reminiscing poetry, poetic prose, you know, writing on poetry, fiction, everything together, a link which he had established through his editorial skills. So, Jayanta, the editor, and Jayanta's connection with Chandrabhaga and my connection with Chandrabhaga and our connections with each other. So communication, contact and connection through Chandrabhaga is another aspect. The third aspect which I want to say is about Jayanta, the poet who inspires you. It's not that, you know, there, are, there have been innumerable poets. Uh, uh, Professor Ashwini Kumar was connecting Neruda. Well, Latin American sensuality and uh, uh, Indian poetry are not too far away. They are both uh, uh, same side of the, I mean, both sides of a paper, perhaps. We can tear one and we can't uh, do without tearing the other one. So this sort of, you know, there have been innumerable poets. Uh, many of uh, us who read poetry, who absorb poetry, who live through poetry, you know, write, compose, discuss, teach, research or whatever, uh, we have been influenced by poetry, fine. But the poet himself has been a tremendous influence. You know, his innocent smile, his dreamy sort of eyes. You know. So that, that aspect of the personality of the man, this is what I thought, you know, I'll just reminisce for a few minutes. You know. As you grow older, you tend to uh, uh, have lots of memories. You have so much memories to discuss. And when you start, uh, uh, you know, analyzing your memories or talking about it, many people feel that, ah, here he is or here she is, they are going to talk about their good old times. Not bad new times, but good old times in that way. So Jayanda in the third phase is the man who inspires, the, 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 the inspiring poet, what we call the Ur poet, the essential poet. Uh, I think I'll start with that and then go backwards to his poetry. Fortunately, it has been a great fortune for me to have interacted with Jayanta at several levels over the years, you know, many years, you know, from starting from 1980s onwards, 79, 18. Professor Ayyappa Padikar had invited Jayanta to the Institute of English where I was doing my master's. Young man coming in with boldly with the jeans and with his jean jacket, you know, jeans jacket. We were so excited. Ah, here is Jayanta the person who has been writing exceptional poetry, who has been inspiring us along with people like Nisi Mesikil, professor of poetry, modernist, you know, the, the harbinger of modernist, uh, uh, you know, poetry in India, and uh, Kamala Das, and here is Jayanta Mahabhatra, the third in the chain. We were so excited. So meeting with Jayanta, you know, we had had, and the thing is, he was so innocent. He, he would just, Murli, let us talk about poetry. Do you have good mangoes in your region? How, how is the how is the tamarind? Is the is the jasmine blooming out blooming out of seasons? You know this is amazing. How many rivers do we have? Of course, these sort of things. Can we go to the nearest water body, please? Uh, how is the the color of the sky? 
the elemental, the sublimity of the elemental thought in the poet was something which was extraordinarily a tremendous influence in our young minds. When we were young, and here is a poet who is just talking, he had a pan-Indian or a pan-universal uh, sort of, you know, uh, uh, vision. And this person was absolutely an inspiration for us, even from the earliest times. Then, of course, we had connections. We used to write to each other. Professor Ashwini Kumar reminded me of the innumerable letters which he used to write. You know, he was a man who would, who would write you and his envelopes and his Indian letters. You know, I have preserved them like anything. Innumerable sort of letters, impeccable sort of handwriting. The way he writes it, it's so good to see the words form on the page. What we really miss, you know, all of us are used to typing on the mobile phones or on our laptops or desktops. We miss out on those beautiful long-handed writing and how beautiful in italics how we used to write. So I recall he sat with us alongside in our benches, you know, he wrote in my notebook. This was absolutely an amazing experience. That was the first time. Eventually afterwards, we had many occasions to meet with each other in uh, Professor Sidi Narsimaya's amazing uh, center in uh, Mysore, Dhvanya Loka, uh, Center for Literature and Indi Indigenous Arts. Jayanta was especially invited there. Many times we will also stand by and, ah, here is Jayanta, he is here, he is going to read out his latest poems. Sometimes he will come out with his uh, non-fictional prose, you know, long winding sort of writings. The way sensuality is again, you know, sensitivity and sensuality together, he will read this out. And in a very innocent way, he'll step out. Well, not from, from the podium, he will step towards us when we have our coffee, tea, or, you know, poha, or whatever we were eating and munching and uh, discussing. He will talk to us. How was it? Was it really good? Did it reach out to you? The kind of innocence with which he came out. You know, this is something which I just cannot forget. Many times in Dhanya Loka. And Professor Edian, of course, with his cigar, he will also be sitting and enjoying. Those were good old times, it is. Jayanta's poetry used to come out. He brought relationship at one time. In fact, he, he brought that uh, uh, waiting was there, then uh, uh, close the sky 10 by 10. That was his first, uh, uh, well, everybody knows that was his first collection, the kind of modernist framework and the formalist way in which he wrote poetry at that time. Eventually from that, he moved to, when he stepped beyond relationship to the temple, you know, the connection with Chelamal, who comes there, you know, south, north, east, west, everything, the pan-Indian view, all those things, many of these extracts he read at Dhanya Loka, along with Professor Sedian, and many of us were sitting there. Eventually, after that, another amazing uh, experience I remember. Uh, this is a time when one can be very personal, I think. He once told me, Murli, uh, can we drive to Kerala? He said, yes, why not? Usha was also there. My wife was there. Runu was there at that time. So Jenda and Runu, they got into a car and we were driving by. He wanted to visit a place called Kumaragam. It's a water body in, in, in central uh, Uttanad region in Kerala. It's a beautiful place. Jenda was excited with water as such. You know, the, 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 uh, the poet who was writing of Mahanadi and, uh, uh, you know, uh, Daya and uh, Chandrabhaga was so excited by seeing water. At one point, he said, stop, stop, stop. Those purple flowers, those lilac flowers, what are they? And I said, they are water hyacinth. Whatever hyacinth it is, please stop. Let me get out. So he got out. He went into the water. He waded into the water. We were so worried he'll get stuck in the water. He waded into the water. He started pulling out handfuls of water hyacinth. It's not such a great flower as all that. Many of us who know about water hyacinth, they are considered to be, you know, not so good flowers. They are sticky and it is not good. But the colors and the, the, the sensitivity to this purple and the lilac colors, this is really amazing. Jayanda, here was Jayanda carrying handfuls of water hyacinth and bringing them back to us. I was reminded of many poets, you know, there was one poet in, in Kerala, uh, uh, P. Kunjraman Nair. P. Kunjraman Nair is one of our finest Mahakavis, you know, great poet. Kunjraman Nair always used to carry this, you know, bundles of uh, uh, lotus and uh, uh, lilies and so many things and carry sweets in his pockets, you know, to give to children flowers and sweets. So here was Jayanda, almost reminding me of the Ur poet, the great poet there, and bringing this water hyacinth. I don't think we can forget the 
the, the, the experience of traveling with Jayanta in Kerala. Many years later, you know, uh, uh, I was also happy to have invited him to stay with us in uh, uh, Pondicherry when I was uh, uh, professor and head in the Pondicherry Central University. We had this, uh, 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 you know, a program called uh, Writer in Residence. And Jenda was so condescending to accept it and come over and spend many weeks with us. It was a kind of fluid and uh, uh, very open sort of system where you could, uh, the writer can stay in the guest house. We have a beautiful sea facing guest house. You can stay there, open the windows and stay there or uh, come to the department and you have an office room there. You can write whatever you want. If you want to complete a project which you're already working on, or if you want to start a new work, you could do that. And if they wanted, they could actually interact with the students. Many times, Jenda would just walk in, walk into my room, and he would say, look, do we have any slot open for me? Can I speak to the students? The excitement with which he shared things with the students, you know, I just can't. See, here is my my professor, Professor Ayapa Padikar, used to say, he's a physics person. Do you know that he is trained as a physicist? A person who is trained as a physicist, there's nothing wrong in that, you know, he has this eye open. And I open to cosmos to the smallest level, the smaller than the smallest, you know, atomic and subatomic levels, and the vaster than the vast, the cosmic and the universal levels. He had this sweep, you know, something like what uh, Gurudev Tagore had. You know, I'm, I'm stepping out of bounds. You know, I would say that he he was able to see life steadily and see it whole. That kind of holistic vision was there as a poet, as a person, as an, a, a person who inspired many of us towards you know poetry and towards imagination this is something which actually makes me remember his uh, chandrabhaga volumes you know he i have this uh, uh, entire collection of chandrabhaga from the earliest times of course from uh, uh, 1979 uh, uh, to 2000 chandrabhaga used to come fairly regularly then after that, you know, there was a break, and then in 2000 he started it again, and he started sending these things. So we used to collect it too. This is a document of history. This is actually an amazing collection of work. You know, the kind of thing which see, I can't but share this with you. The kind of printed books which he used to send. This is a piece of history. I preserve it. The, the print with which he had, uh, you know, created Chandrabhaga. In those days, many of us would remember, you know, we had lots of journals to write. Illustrated Weekly was there. We used to write in that. And you had Caravan, you had Mirror, you had Quest, you had the Journal of Indian Writing in English, you had Literary Criterion, you had a new Quest was there, you know, on one side, Professor uh, Nisi Mesekiel was having his uh, uh, collection. So whenever we had any doubts, we would write to him. And he will write in a postcard. Also, Nisi Mesekiel will write in a postcard right to the end, to the edge, this side and that side. Even where the address line was there, he will write and he will post it. Jenda would impeccably write in his cover and send it to us. So this is Chandrabhaga alongside Mirror. And of course, Bhagirdha was there. Professor Minachi Mukherjee was editing Bhagirdha. And there were so many journals, ex extremely beautiful journals, but nothing as exquisite as Chandrabhaga. So we were so excited. You know, when I sent my first poem to him, he was so excited. I mean, I was so excited to publish it. He said, only I'm going to publish this. And uh, he used it. And this publication actually motivated us to write and to go beyond. Many of our poems were, many of my generation started publishing in Chandrabhaga, Mirror, and many others. That is Jayanda as the editor. Without saying a few words about Jayanda, the poet, you know, my discussion would not be complete. I don't know whether I am exceeding the time limit. Can I take a few more minutes, Professor? Of course, Rob? of course, Murali, sir. We are all ears. Yes. Please go ahead. Uh, this is, you see, uh, uh, Jayanta, his poetic eye was always turned towards the heavens. And he could show strong emotions. As I tried to say at the beginning, you know, he was somebody who brought in the inside and outside, Agam and Purab, that way. In fact, uh, 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 if I could read, see, this is his, uh, I just picked up uh, the old collection, you know, books of Jain, the, this is 
false start, the best of gender, waiting, reign of rights, relationship. This was published in, in a single uh, uh, volume like this with a handwritten hand, you know, uh, uh, acid free paper. He calls it relationship a poem. You know. Here. I think I'll read a, sh a short poem from uh, The False Start. Jenda's poetry, you know, is a poetry of uh, decolonization, I would say, because we had many phases of, you know, colonial writing. Many people talk about him as a Indian English poet. I don't know. I, I would call him, you know, essentially an Indian poet, whether you write in English or whether you write in Odia or Bengali or whatever. The very fact that he went back to write in Odia uh, and he still continues to write in English shows that, you know, there, there is not much of difference between uh, English language and Odia or Bengali or Malayalam or Tamil, Telugu, Kannada or Assamese. The way you see things, that is the most important part. You know, the early colonial phase was a phase of imitation and eventually it moved on to a period of resistance. But with Jayanta, I feel that, you know, there is a kind of holistic connection of language. The, 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 what do you call it? You know, uh, Shabda and Artha, you know, walk and meaning. Shabdartha Sahidav Kavyam, you know, Bamaha has mentioned it. So that unity of uh, sound and sense is what you see in this amazing point this is an early point you know with a poet you know uh, i don't know whether the poet is mature when he or she starts writing and becomes immature when he or she starts uh, goes to a later date there is no specific time scheme in poetry this early vision is already there in the reign of rights or whatever when you come right from the early times you know, this is there this is a poem called the mountain the mountain you know shackled to the earth it stands I don't know whether many of you might remember this. Shackled to the earth it stands, all its dead weight. In the darkness of evening, silence and pressure only, multiplying, adding, subtracting in the abyssal heart. Each day, falling to pieces under the straddling sunlight, it gives clear proof that one might still reconstruct one's life, rigid. It strangely impotent. Perhaps it eagerly waits for the world to speak, for the mute clock to strike again, for a new kind of society to form from the ruins of hate. And all day we climb those slopes which do not ease at all, where unfinished time blots out the differences among us as it sets itself irremediably on the peak. Late in the evening of life, an embarrassment prevents the world from speaking. Can the wide valley here down below lessen the mountain's weight? Here, where we are afraid within ourselves and the earth is thin and sad with insufficiency as above. The wind raises the fields of our rights, and the great bulk of conscience stirs, moving in its process of exorcism. At one reading, perhaps the poem doesn't reach out, but then if you are familiar with the whole landscape of return of Jayanta, you see that, you know, to return, one has to have an experience earlier. Returning is a process of, you know, regeneration, going back and retrieving what was already there. And he carried this, the, this burden of fruits, this closing the sky 10 by 10 or wherever he was going. He shed this early, you know, uh, monotonous, formalistic sort of, you know, versification, which he was doing at the early times. Eventually, he moved to a, a realization of the inner and the outer. This is the landscape of return. I'm so impressed that you have actually placed him perfectly fair and square with this concept of landscape of return. Not because the poet has gone back to Odia, but because he has tried to reclaim the self. A reclamation of self, an ontological kind of identity. This is what 
the poet has done. In fact, all great poets you know, go beyond, and there is this sense of beyonding. Jayanta is an amazing Mahakavi for that matter, a great poet who actually has been able to realize this. I'm so happy that you know I could speak about him like this. Sanskrit poetics talks about Abare Kavya Samsare Kavireva Prajavadihi. So Kavireka Prajavadi, this is Prajavadi himself. Whether the poet is Prajavadi or Prajavadi is the poet, we don't know. So Jayanta is somebody who becomes the real Prajavadi of poetry. So this landscape of return is what actually extols this amazing poet. And I feel that I'm so happy to have participated in this, uh, uh, like, a, like a tiny drop in the ocean, you know, shared Jayanta and shared his smile. I'm sure that if he is listening to this, he will have that cheeky smile. Murli, what are you talking about? Are you trying to teach poetry? No, I am not teaching poetry. I'm just experiencing poetry. And this is my, uh, 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 humbly, I place it at his uh, feet. Thank you all. Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to talk about, to recognize this great poet. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Murli, and who was a very famous professor of English in Pondicherry Central University, and not only a professor of English, who was an, uh, is an ardent scholar and poetry, and also a great poet, written so many anthologies and uh, well, uh, reviewed worldwide. Thank you so much for brilliant, brilliant. Uh, no, I'll say continuation, continuities with Jayanta Mahapatra, continuities with Jayanta Mahapatra, wonderful. Over to Bashudara, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Listening to Ashwini sir and Murli sir has been like, you know, we are gradually uncovering uh, an era which many of us have not lived through. Uh, we have a number of students here. We have a number of young researchers and faculty members here. Uh, we also have, uh, as we see in the chat box, one of Jayant Mahapatra's physics students here, and perhaps there are more. So it, it is, you know, revisiting uh, an era which we were clueless about. It is reliving it through, you know, Murli sir and Shwashwini sir. So thank you very much for offering this very rich uh, bouquet of observations, of experiences, of emotional connections. Uh, we have had two speakers, we have two more, but I would like to offer you, Bihat Within would like to offer you a musical rendition of Jayant Mahapatra's well-known poem, Dawn at Puri, uh, by Sutapa Bhattacharya, who is a well-known artist from Bengal and who has very uh, close connections, personal connections with Jayant Mahapatra. I would invite Sutapa ma'am uh, to kindly, uh, you know, offer her humble tribute uh, her vocal tribute of Dawn at Puri uh, for Jayanta sir. So, Tapa ma'am, can you hear us? Uh, um, uh, may I intervene? No. Basu? Yes, yes. Uh, actually, power situation here is very gleam. You know, that's why. I, may I just uh, do my presentation so that. Uh, oh, okay. Sure, 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 okay, sure. Okay, sure, sir. Sure, sure, sure. Oh, yeah. Thank you so much. You know. Uh, because for the past two hours or so, there is no power, you know, I'm yeah. just... Yeah, yes, uh, certainly, but, certainly. Uh, we would love to hear you first, sir, then. Right, yeah, yeah. all right. Please go ahead. Um, thank you so much. It is let me let me introduce uh, Professor Kalidash Misra, who is a very renowned professor of English of Sambalpur University and the land from where Jayantata is from. So, voice from the same land, Kalidash, sir. Over to Kalidash. Thank you. Uh, it's indeed my good fortune, personal privilege, and high honor that I have been invited to this uh, August event to pay tribute to 51 sublime writing years of Jant Mahapatra. I am very much thankful to my friend, poet, and professor Jayadeep Sarangi for this. My association with Jant Mahapatra goes back to 1976, when I was reading his first collection, Close the Sky 10 by 10, during my MA in Utkal University, Bani Bihar. He was a source of inspiration for all of us then, and he's very much the inspiration now. And I was so very fortunate to be published by him in his Chandra Bhaga, in the early 1980s. 
I met him in person much later, and it didn't take much, much time to forge an enduring relationship with the poet, a bonding that covers the entire spectrum from close the sky 10 by 10, the sky without sky, mm. and beyond. And what a journey Jant Mahapatra has. The journey of the poet has started much earlier, but he published his first collection when he was 43 years old, driven by a sense of loneliness, an abiding concern for life and the mortality of life, his own mortality and the medita meditations through poems have gone on, as is evident from the latest collection Sky Without Sky, where in a brief note, he writes about the poem. The poem that meditates on not just so much of reality and struggles to go deep into the nothingness that surrounds us in the world of ours. The poem that meditates on not so much of reality, but struggles to go deep into the nothingness that surround us in the world of ours. For Jant Mahapatra, talking about what this poetry reveals is difficult. Chaos in the outside world has always been a challenge. Chaos in the outside world has always been a challenge. But seems to be relevant to the poetry I have done. To capture the chaos through poetry, has been his endeavor, and this is not restricted to just a place or a person, as it encompasses the world and involves the whole of humanity, past and present, without any consideration of caste or color or creed or race or gender or nationality. For as Whitman said long ago, we can say, Jayanta Mahapatra contains multitude. That's it. Think of the poems about the victims that he has wrote. When you say that Jayanta Mahapatra is a world poet, you know, very much uh, uh, writing poems on different subjects, you know, variety of subjects that he has dealt with. Poems uh, about the victims of Bhopal guest tragedy in 1984 like the one that he titled, A Dance of Bee Jeweled Snacks. That's the poem on the Bhopal guest victims. A Dance of Bee Jeweled Snacks. And this poem is from the Disposer's Nest. And with an epigraph from Neruda's explaining a few things. You know, Neruda has been rightly mentioned by Professor Ashwini Kumar and Professor uh, Sivra Mutishnan. Neruda's poem, if you remember, explaining a few things. There he is telling, somebody asks him, why, why don't you have poem? Why, why are you not writing about the valleys and mountains and flowers and rivers of your native land? It goes on like that. But the last three lines, come and see the blood in the streets. Come and see the blood in the streets. Come and see the blood in the streets. Like Neruda, John Mahapatra is also, he's not a lotus eater or a dreamer of dreams. When the reality outside is explosive and overwhelming, one cannot just close his eyes and ears. John Mahapatra, through his poems, voices the sorrow and angst, the pains and privations the despair and disillusionment of a whole generation of people cutting across race and culture and creed and nationality and gender. Think of the titles, think of the subject that he has dealt with. Through his poems, he empathizes with the conditions of the children who were massacred in Peshawar on December 16, 2014. There were no trumpet blasts, that's the title, from Hedgehog Light. 
she writes about the lost children of America. That is from life science. She writes about a blind singer in a train, common sight. That is from Swamba. Writes about Gandhi. Close this guy, 10 by 10. Writes about the yogi. Or about a girl suffering at a department store. Or about the whorehouse in a Calcutta street. Or about the abandoned British cemetery at Baleshwar, Odisha. Yes, poems addressed to persons on different persons. Angela Aston, you know, we are not very much familiar. A poet, US American poet. Mother Teresa, he has written about that. I mentioned Gandhi. Benjamin Molles, South African activist poet who was executed, you know, by the apartheid government. That is, you know, he was very much in the news then. And then about the death of a nameless girl in Bhopal, 1984. About the brutal massacre of women and children in the paddy fields at Nelly, Assam. Think about that. And uh, she goes through these anthologies, writes about the country. India is the same, writes about Orissa, writes about Bhuneshwar, Kanarak, Puri, constant themes. But when he's writing about the country, that is reading re under political turmoil, violence and bloodshed in Punjab. Bhopal guest tragedy I mentioned. self immolation by the sons and daughters in terms of fire in protest against the Mandal Commission report. That also draws the attention of the poet. When he writes another love poem, we, we, we discuss uh, Jan Mahapadra's love poem. But what sort of love poem he writes? When he writes another love poem, he says, we have become steep and cautious with each other as these countries with the US and the USSR. The lovers have become steep and curses, like India becoming steep and curses with countries like, say, USSR or USA. In the 15th of August, again, celebrated day, that should celebrate the newfound freedom and independence, he writes, there is so much land between us now to separate and divide, to alienate and distance not to bridge and unite, not to harmonize and unite with the land, but to certain snare, the reason being the inflamed mango blossoms of February, hardened by the unreal silence in the field. The inflamed mango blossoms of February, hardened by the unreal silence in the field. Of Independence Day, and we have hung out the caracas of the past in the crossroads. Talking about independence, but he's talking about this hanging up the caracas of the past in the crossroads. Our children keep seeing our fingers pulling threads of meat from it. Think about the dawn points. I am reminded of a novel by the American novelist, Native American novelist, uh, Anne Scott Momade, The House Made of Dawn. The title is so very romantic and it is so very pleasing. But here, think of the dawn poems by Jan Mahapatra. There is this poem, Dawn, you know, from Marilyn of Rights. What sort of a dawn it is? A dawn we expect to come with lots of promises, possibilities. Looking forward to a new day, a new life. But uh, here, done is like a hard crossword puzzle. It sets riddles crowding against one another, never promising. In a poem titled Summer, we have the promise of a living green mango. You know, uh, Professor Sivaramakrishna was telling about that, green mm -hmm. mangoes. 
the plumage of a leaf, living green mango, but no, it is not there for, it is not there, for it drops softly to earth from a corner of her mind. A mango dropping from the corner of her mind. Softly, you can see it, you can, uh, you know, have the fragrance. And the poem he wrote for his country titled India, we felt of ourselves abandoned in the wilds. People abandoned in the wilds, in things not real. Full of mysterious fog that excites the shadows of the spirit. Mysterious fog that excites the shadows of the spirit. Shadow is insubstantial. The spirit is insubstantial. And when you are talking about shadows of the spirit, think that you are not talking about the surface reality that you inhabit, something beyond. Down is a puzzle. A living green mango is not real as it drops from the corner of our mind. And the people are engulfed by mysterious fog that excites the shadows of the spirit. Mark, the spirit is not substantial, as I said. We are, in fact, in a world that lies beyond, a world that lies elsewhere. And here in such a world, to be happy and hopeful is a difficult thing. When the country is beset with millions of hungry mouths, ethnic violence, political turmoil, as a poet, he thinks he's helpless. What does a poet, what can a poet do? He thinks he's helpless. And my need to have you is only caught in the design of a poem I have been working. I can only, uh, you know, bracket you, case you, put you uh, within the design of a poem. He thinks he is not a seer, seer of truth, not an illuminator of consciousness. Though the sorry spectacle of death and hunger and violence and disposition and marginalizations are back again and again to mark the pages. When the present is overwhelmed by defeat, in my eyes, hunger and art met the bones of one's breath. Hunger and art, and the country is unreal, really. There is this poem on the 25th anniversary of a republic, 1975. We have countryside that melts away in the rain, a country that melts away. A crowd of crows that swoop down over the statues of the great dead. Not a promising scene with the feverish cries of birds melting into the hill. John Mahapatra said for, you know, as we know, if you go through his autobiography, at one point of time, when he was 13 years old, he said for the senior Cambridge exam in 1941, when he was only 13 years, when World War II was at its peak, passed in second grade, had failed in an English language paper, joined Abramsa College, was reading Howard Spring, Sebi Tiger, buying books from the Wheeler Bookstore at the railway station in Katak. In his autobiography, he was writing, I was elated when Hitler conquered Europe. Probably that is why I had brought one man against Europe. All those books built me, shaped the language, learned to love. Is it unjust if my loyalty is with the English language? Loyalty is with the English language, but the British government he didn't like. He was elated when Hitler owned. You know, because England was very much colonizing us at one point of time when he was a student. I can't say wh why, but I was unhappy when Britain lost a battle. I was very much happy unaware when Britain lost a battle. Was it because the, they ruled us? When he was happy because the England, the, they lost the battle. So 
if you are talking about Janat Mahapatra, you know, you are trying to suggest that, uh, yes, he belonged to Katak, very much rooted in Katak. But like a flourishing tree, his themes, subjects are branch out in all directions. He has, you know, written about the surface realities, you know, not just the reality of Puri or Bhubaneswar or Konark or Katak, reality of India as a whole. One of the best books that he wrote, Temple, it deals with a sort of gruesome, cruel reality, you know, that happened in Kerala. So he belonged to Katak, belonged to Orisha, but he was very much embraced by people world over because of his empathy, because of his, uh, say, concerns for ordinary people, common people, and people who matter. And he never distinguished. And he was so unassuming as a person, as a teacher. You know, last time when I met him in 2018 in Puri, you know, he autographed the copy of my collected poems to Kalidas in remembrance of a beautiful friendship. And when Professor Sarangi invited me, I was thinking about that particular moment, you know, in Puri. Puri poems, you know, two books I had taken for uh, his signature. Puri poems, Sky Without Sky, and Collected Poems. And it is very much heartening, and it is so very much uh, a sort of uh, uh, promising and good thing that uh, Professor Sadangi and Basudhara Madam, I have decided to, you know, felicitate and pay tribute to a legendary poet, you know, who is still very much active, you know, in his 90s. And he is still very much looking forward, and we do look forward to such moments when he'll be celebrated uh, in such gatherings. So, with these words, I thank you all, and I'm glad that power is uh, you know, sufficient uh, for me to present. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you so much. Really. Thank you, thank you, Pranav. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. And we are very grateful for the power connection at your end that has allowed us to hear you uninterrupted. And we have been, of course, drawn in by the range of ideas that you have introduced about the poetry of uh, Jayant Mahapatra. And uh, to go back to Sutapa, ma'am, uh, because Kalidas are concluded on that beautiful note reminding us of his Puri poems. And it's a good point to uh, invite Sutapa, ma'am, for a musical rendition of Donet Puri. Over to you, Sudhapa <laughs> The 
ਕੰਨਿੰਗ ਚੈਨ ਸੋਕੇ ਦਫਤੇ ਲਾਲੀ ਲਾਈਕ ਕੇਤੇ ਰੂਇਨ ਲਿਪ ਸ਼ੇਸ਼ੇ thank you ma'am for such a beautiful uh, rendition of a very very memorable poem thank you for bringing music into our beautiful heart within uh, from here we will move on to uh, zinia mitra uh, professor zinia mitra she is uh, a faculty in english she heads the department of women studies at siliguri she is a poet she is a writer and uh, she has been a very very um, important scholar on jain mahapatra uh, through her extensive research work zinia di over to you and importantly vasudhara we started from mumbai to then to travel to kerala pandicherry to uh, jaintadas land katak uh, and uh, sambalpur and to kolkata and down to the foothills of the himalaya zinia it's true india speaking yeah over to zinia thank you thank you vasudhara thank you dodi good evening everyone uh, am i am i audible yes it perfectly uh, good evening everyone here poets professors research scholars students we are united today uh, by our love for jayanta mahapatra and this feels you know kind of amazing the contribution of jayanta mahapatra to indian english poetry cannot be actually measured in words we were trying to all of us even me i have tried to you know talk about jayanta mahapatra's contribution but his contribution cannot actually be uh, measured in words we talk of the trial who laid the foundation of indian english poetry jayanta mahapatra ek ramanujan or partho sharothi there are more like p lal kamala das who sculpted indian english poetry how indian english poetry opened to experimentation and made its place in world literature in the hands of these poets is a well known history today jaydeep was speaking of jayanta mahapatra as a caregiver you know his journal chandrabhaga and can we not agree more on this i would like to thank heart within for organizing this program in tribute of the poet who is very very close to my heart i read jayanta mahapatra when he was the editor of poetry column for the telegraph i must acknowledge here that it was at the suggestion of poet niranjan mohanty that i began my correspondence with jayanta mahapatra that i a thought of working of on jayanta mahapatra and on indian english poetry i am indeed very fortunate to have corresponded with the poet to have visited his tinkonia bagicha which is internationally famous now he sent me his volumes when he heard that i am interested in working on him professor murli uh, has already shown the volumes has already shown us the volumes mahapatra is always uh, discussed you know in terms of identity in terms of oriya identity you know he is famously said that he is someone who writes oriya poems in english he writes uh, from his identity 
from his Orissa, identity in Orissa, or he has been discussed as a social poet. But since hearth within always kindles something inside my heart, you know, each year in the heart within, I would like to talk about something else today. I would like to talk of the rain in Mahapatra. There are, we see, all of us who read Mahapatra, we will see that many important images woven into Mahapatra's poetry that call for attention. Natural images like the sky, the river, there's the stone, there is also the rain. Although the poet you know, closes his sky early, he has a volume called Close the Sky 10 by 10, which was published in 1971, we know that. Although the sky is closed, it rains. And not just the rain of rights, for the sky is also a mental ambience. And when it rains, it rains on the mindscape. Those who read Mahapatra will know that there is always this movement in his poems from the outside to the inside. This, this continuous, this journey, we, uh, we face this outside movement, uh, the movement of the journey from outside to, to the inside. So, um, uh, many poets actually have written on rain, sang of rain. We remember the famous lines of Yaksha in Meghdud, uh, who, who says that the, happy, the mind of a happy person is, is excited when it rains. Rain knocks on Mahapatra's imagination, and he has a number of poems on rain. I will name them, like rain, name some of them. Rain scents, a rain, a rain of rights, four rain poems, again rain falls, rains in Orissa. I just named a few of them. Rain is captured in many moods by the poet. Sometimes it comes slowly across the sky. I'm quoting from Rain of Rights. In the unreal country, when everything merges in darkness of gloom, there is defeat in the poet's eye. The rain grates silence. Let us note the word grates. Okay? This is the special technique of Mahapatra, you know, the use of small word and the poem becomes absolutely different. There uh, is also the concrete image of the rain hanging from there. In the wound, uh, the poem wound portrays the decayed world with darkness, cold. There we have rain slashing the streets. And when the country is in turmoil, like in disposes nests, rain falls heavy, heavy, you know, hard as stone. June rain tries hard to give darkness and light an organic unity. Rain stepping against the door is sometimes so persistent. It is so very persistent that it is mistaken for the dead themselves trying to come in. This is from shadow space. Rain for Mahapatra is um, at times, uh, as, uh, many times, uh, is, it's a profusion of expression. You know, words and rain coexist in poems, as in the poems of life science, where rain is profusion of expression. But water, on the other hand, water is a refuge, a means of hiding. He says, what will I keep secret from myself, secret to myself, I'm sorry, when nothing is seen anymore? What will I keep secret to myself when nothing is seen anymore? He says in the whiteness of wounds, rain images in Mahapatra bring in multiple levels of meanings and evocations. Like Wordsworth's, I wandered lonely as a cloud. The poet's identification with the natural order is complete in, I quote, I move on like rain to its flaunting flight. I am thankful to uh, Jaydeep and Basudhara for organizing this event around Mahapatra. I thank you for inviting me. I heard the ruminations, the talk around Mahapatra, who remains my favorite poet, uh, both because of his technique as a poet and also because of the human being that he is. So this was my humble submission to the great poet, Jaydeep Mahapatra. Thank you.
Thank you very much, Sinyadi, for that uh, very elegant uh, statement about rain in Jant Mahapatra's poetry. And with this, we come to uh, the end of one section of this very beautiful session of discussions. And we are all set for uh, listening to a wonderful panel of student scholars who are here from across the country uh, to read their poems, their selected poems uh, from the works of Jain Mahapatra. So I would like to begin this uh, poetry reading session by inviting uh, Ankita Bakshi, who is a student of New Alipur College. Uh, so Ankita Bakshi from New Alipur College, Kolkata, and she will be reciting the poem Hunger. Over to you, Ankita. Thank you, ma'am. Good evening, everyone. Good evening to our lovely moderators, Bashidhara ma'am and Joydeep sir, and to my friends near and far. I am thankful to learn so much about Jointa Mahapatra through the discussion led by, led by our four learned speakers and also for the beautiful musical rendition. This evening, I would like to recite a poem by Jointa Mahapatra called Hunger. It was hard to believe the flesh was heavy on my back. The fisherman said, will you have her, carelessly, trailing his nets and his nerves as though his words sanctified the purpose with which he faced himself. I saw his white bones thrash his eyes. I followed him across the sprawling sands, my mind thumping in the flesh's sling. Hope lay perhaps in burning the house I lived in. Silence gripped my sleeves, his body clawed at the froth. His old nets had only dragged up from the seas. In the flickering dark, his hut opened like a wound. The wind was I and the days and nights before. Palm fronds scratched my skin. Inside the shack, an oil lamp splayed the hours bunched to those walls. Over and over, the sticky suit crossed the space of my mind. I heard him say, my daughter, She's just turned 15. Feel her. I'll be back soon. Your bus leaves at nine. The sky fell on me and the father's exhausted while. Long and lean, her ears were cold as rubber. She opened her wormy legs wide. I felt the hunger there. The other one, the fish slithering, turning inside. Thank you, everyone. Thank you a lot. Thank you, Ankita, for that very powerful rendition of, again, a very immortal poem, Hunger. Uh, we move on to our next poet, uh, Hishita Valecha, from the Shivaji Arts and Commerce College, Amravati, Maharashtra. And the poem that Hishita will read is Traveller. Over to you, Hishita. Thank you, ma'am. Good evening, all the dignitaries. Am I audible, ma'am? Shita, perfectly. Please go ahead. Good evening, all the dignitaries. The poem I am going to recite today is Shahana. Every evening, the bells of the temple close by rest their easy weight on the bow. It's time again to wonder what I'll do with what I know. A warm vapor rises from the darkening earth like a hope. Somewhere, Inside a room, a girl is dying in her mother's arms. Elsewhere, someone revenges himself for his broken life. I look at people, at my little misery. Beyond, at a jasmine, sad, sweet smile. Movement here has purpose. It is not cold and tired. The deer chasing the new growth of grass. The drum thumping against the sky. The woman with her knees drawn to her chest and the wind that deceives itself, it has tellingly carried the scream of the girl who is dying in her mother's arms. My knowledge and my time fade too quite tonight, unlike the flutter of birds. I try to wear this weight lightly, but the weight of the unknown worries me. Thank you very much. Thank you, Hishita, for that beautiful rendition. We move over next to Mimansa Subedi, who is from Celestian College, Siliguri. 
uh, currently residing in Siliguri, and the poem that she will be reading is The Captive Heir of Chandipur on Sea. Over to you, Mimansa. Good evening, Professor. You're muted. Poet and writer. Uh, am I audible now? Perfect. Good evening, professors, writers, poets, and my dear friends from across India. I'm very delighted to be reading a poem uh, of Jayanta Mahapatra, The Captive Heir of Chandipur, on sea. I've selected this poem, and I shall be reading it. Day after day, the drunk sea at Chandipur spits out the gauze wings of shells along the beach and rumples the thin air behind the sands. Who can tell of the songs of the sea that go on to baffle and double the space around our lives? Or of smells paralyzed through centuries of deltas hard and white that stretched once to lure the feet of women, bidding their men goodbye? Or of salt and light that dark and provocative eyes demanded their shoulders drooping like lotuses in the noonday? And what is it now that scatters the tide in the shadow of this proud watercourse? The ridicule of the dead? Susan's sails still whisper legends on the horizons. Who are you, occupant of the silent sigh of the conch? The ground seems only a memory now, a torn beneath. And as we wait for the tide to flood the mud flats, the song that reaches our ears is just our own. The cries of the fishermen come drifting through the spray, music of what the world has lost. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mimansa, for that beautiful uh, rendition. Uh, we move ahead to Manesha Lawrence from Holy Cross College, Tiruchirapalli, Tamil Nadu, and she will recite the poem, Twilight. Yes, thank please. you, ma'am. Good evening, everyone. I would like to thank Dr. Mary Jayanti for providing me with this opportunity. Twilight by Jayanta Mahapatra. An orange flare lights the pale panes of the hospital in a final wish of daylight. It's not yet dark. In the children's ward under a mother's face, the dead, always so young, water startles in the river's throat. Its cry, a plea to share in its curse, Somewhere this twilight shall fall and hide the whiteness of jasmines about to bloom. Newly lit lamps in the houses across the street make me look out at the wet August evening that holds up the vast unknown in such small, delicate hands. Thank you, everyone. Thanks a lot, Manisha. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jayanti, also, and to all the uh, wonderful teachers, you know, who have encouraged and inspired their students to join the session and to read today. Uh, next, we would like to call upon Nikhilesh Mishra from Kolkata, uh, who studies at the Satyajit Ray Film and Television Institute, Kolkata. And he will be reading out two very short poems. Uh, it is uh, an Uriya translation. Uh, titled this poem gives power to silence and uh, another poem a missing person from the reign of rights nikhilesh over to you yeah am i audible yes perfect yeah. good evening everyone uh, thanks for having me uh, the first poem i'll be reading is an odia actually it's an originally written in odia by john tamasatsu uh, it's titled a kobitati nirobataku khyamata diye dhadinko bhitare शून्य स्थान रही था बोली पाठक को सुविधा हुए लीपो कही आम एकाठी बस था पर्वत आते जाए खाली पर्वत थी समस्त नीरवता को व्यवहार करती मन अच्छी मोर हावड़ा स्टेशन रे बस मोर अक्लेश मन है समस्ते सामान जमी आज करोना भाईर आक्रांत पृथ्वी मन आउ गोटे गप केवल थाए आम गपटी शेष हुए थैंक यू दिस इज द फर्स्ट पॉइंट द सेकंड पॉइंट आई वाज सपोज टू गिव वाज अ मिसिंग पर्सन फ्रॉम अ रेन ऑफ राइट्स बट हियरिंग अ लॉट ऑफ द कॉन्वर्सेशन अबाउट रेन आई कुडंट रेजिस्ट रीडिंग द टाइटल पोएम फ्रॉम अ रेन ऑफ राइट्स व्हिच इज वन ऑफ माय मोस्ट फेवरेट पोएम्स बाय जॉन तमापत्र Uh, so if i may be allowed i will read the title points it's a very short poem a rain of rights 
sometimes a rain comes slowly across the sky that turns upon its gray cloud breaking away into light before it reaches its objective the rain i have known and traded all this life strewn like kelp on the beach like some shape of conscience i cannot look at a malignant purpose in a nun's eye who was the last man on earth to whom the cold cloud brought the blood to his face numbly i climb to the mountain tops of hours where my own soul quivers on the edge of answers which still stale air sits on an angel's wings what holds my rain so it's hard to overcome thank you thank you nikilesh for those beautiful poems and also for introducing uriya into today's uh, gathering thank you very much uh, i would next like to call upon saket kumar who is a research scholar on jain mahapatra from the arka jain university jamshedpur and saket is going to read the poem homecoming oh Over thank you, you thank you so much ma'am um, i would like to thank jadeep sir and bashudra ma'am for uh, giving me an opportunity to read the poetry of the great jain mahapatra in front of such eminent personalities people here uh, the poetry i'll read is homecoming uh, which was published in the volume entitled uh, hesitant light in the year 2016 uh, this is it i have failed to recognize myself revealing my face before others has made me an enemy the wax work has acquired a part of its own like religion was purely a part of certain things which the world brought into being just in the way flavor arises from blend of spices and herbs it's a name when i wake up or like history when we have made ourselves our griefs are full of unreason like children we look into books before we know the letters not knowing what they mean not knowing how to be disturbed of history behind my face the abandoned framework of memory sits resting ignored no longer hurting the eyes of those i have loved with images larger than life in an album i never got around to fit photographs into still the bit of sky in my eyes wanders about as i listen to the summer afternoon the snaky siren of a fire engine the cops noisily carried down the crowded street thinking about ways to lose my way of making friends with others and not to depend on another's death in order to know how i stood with my life some feelings don't travel well between our years my yesterdays are only well worn enough to take me back to those words where i can make symbols out of ordinary things thank you thank you saket for reciting this beautiful poem and now we move over to our last uh, recitation for this session and i call upon shubham kumar pati from mahatma gandhi antarashtriya hindi vishwavidyalaya vardha maharashtra and uh he will be reading the poem sanskrit uh, thank you, you. thank you ma'am thank you uh, so much uh, to the team uh, so uh, i am just uh, going to read the uh, poem uh, sanskrit uh, okay uh, awaken them they are notes of sound that seem to melt and crumble up like some jellyfish of tropical seas torn from slip with a hard line by prophecies listen hard their mail gone world sprawls the page like rows of tree trunks reeking in the smoke of ages the branches glazed and dead as thou longing to make up with the sky but having lost touch with themselves were unable to find themselves hold meaning 
and yet down the steps into the water at Varanasi, where the lifeless body seemed to grow human, the shaggy heads of wood birds moved back and forth between the hearths, castings of the rain and the noiseless feathers of summer, aware that their syllables overwhelming silence would not escape the hearers now, and which must remain their mysterious divine path guarded by drift of quid, quivering and bunions, a language of clocks over cobbles casting its uncertain spell trembling sadly into the mist. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. Thank you, Shubham. And I really ought to penalize myself. Shubham is not our last poet reading. Uh, I missed out Shrishti Ganguly from Diamond Harbor uh, Women's University, West Bengal. And Shrishti is going to conclude with her poem, Her Hand. Over to you, Shrishti. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, good evening, sir, and good evening, ma'am. First of all, uh, thank you so much for making us a part of this beautiful session. And we came to know so many things about Jayant Mahapatra. And I'm going to read a poem by Jayant Mahapatra, which is very close to my heart, Her Hand. The, the little girl's hand is made of darkness. How will I hold it? The street lamps hang like decapitated heads. Blood opens the terrible door between us. The wide mouth of the country is clamped in pain while its body rides on its bed of nails. This little girl has just a raped body for me to reach her. The weight of my guilt is unable to overcome my resistance to hug her. Thank you very much. Thank you, Srishti. And I think that it was destined that your poem should conclude the session because it was a very intense and evocative reading uh, of a poem that many of us have missed. Thank you very much. And this has been, you know, one very, very special session. I don't have enough adjectives in my repertoire to talk about the beauty and the sublimity uh, of the session. Uh, it was actually Jadeep sir's idea, you know, for a long, long while to have a session and to invite Jayad Mahapatra himself to speak. But somehow that could not happen because of, you know, there are various hassles involved in connecting online. Very challenging for him at this point in time to be, you know, to be taxed oh, yeah. with uh, the necessity of connecting online. So this is actually Jadid Sir's dream that we should have, you know, a congregation uh, of poets, writers, academics, and we always keep the format very flexible so that, you know, we can have things from personal reminiscences down to, you know, scholarly analysis. Uh, and the idea is also to pass on a legacy, to build uh, and to, you know, to make uh, current poets and students aware of the rich tradition that they have and to pass it on to them. So this was an endeavor towards that. And we are very grateful to each one of you who have, you know, joined us uh, from their very uh, busy and hectic uh, schedules. I would now like to invite Jadeep sir to deliver the formal vote of thanks for the session. Over to you, Jadeep sir. You know, it's like a random descent, one of the collections by Jantada. So I'm amazed and touched by the evening's great fall, nightfall, isn't it? Uh, what a pan-Indian scene that we could showcase. And thanks for the support from each and everyone present here and those who were, who were at the beginning also. We crossed 80. We were 80 plus. And uh, from different parts of India, uh, metro cities, small Mahasal universities, uh, even a town, a towns and uh, villages. And we try to locate Jayantada and we try to take down Jayantada from memory lane. Those who were the early associates of Jayantada in mid 70s and late 70s, they taught us and they also enlightened us how the relationships developed and the role of Chandravaga in the earlier phases uh, of the 
canon making of Indian English poetry. I will say canon making of Indian English poetry. All to all great speakers, I say you enriched us so much. And really, starting with Ashiniji, then Professor Murli, then uh, Kalidasa, and then Genia, all spoke from the heart and also from the brain. And you moved the heart and the brain as well. I think the legacy continues with the secondary material on the poet as well. The creative writing is important as well as the secondary material creation is also important to solidify the criticism and the continuities in studies. So I think uh, wonderful, wonderful uh, talks that came from the personal note, came from scholarship, came from wide spectrum comparisons and reference to Neruda and other Latin American tradition that is you know, falling back to the ruins of the past. Neruda's facet, Mahapatra's Dhauli and other facets, Kunaraka, and that is uh, wonderful, wonderful. And we learned a lot from them. I thank uh, all the students and the research scholars who read uh, and recited poems of Jayanta Mahapatra, I think through which the legacy will continue. And we try to catch, uh, make a sample of the entire India so that we try to amalgamate students and scholars from different parts of India. Uh, from different institutions, universities, and colleges to have a feel of um, Jayantada's recitation through their uh, background and through their mouth. Thanks to all teachers who really made it possible, encouraged them to recite. Uh, I see many of them are present here. Thanks for inspiration. Thanks. To, it's a wonderful audience, very wonderful. Shamla Prasad, Shamla Nara, and to everybody. So all great giants that joined and you know, whom the young generation follow closely and they are the makers of the present generation. I think the many university departments, the English departments, the scholars and all the students, you really give a vital force or vital energy to this evening. Thank you Bashudhara and Saket for doing everything Shubham and all technical support, and all uh, uh, all beautiful minds and poets who are present in this evening and made the evening very, very special. And feel free to report this in your newspaper, in your regional language, and also in English in your part of the country as well, because this is such a such a beautiful evening. I think it will be memor uh, it will be in our memory for a long, long time. Thank you. We are Thank grateful you. also to Sutapa, ma'am, you know, for bringing you yeah, yes. into this yeah. session. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. There are several difficulties in, you know, uh, musical rendition in an online format. Uh, but nevertheless, she has done a wonderful job out of it. This was something very new, uh, rendering an English poem into, you know, Indian classical music. And uh, thank you, Sutapa Ma'am, for taking that pain and for your thank generosity you. in accepting our invitation and also for your love for uh, Jayant Mahapatra. Thank you very much. Thank you. And finally, pronouns to Chantada, to his Benny and Free, and he is, you know, you know, this is a program was scheduled in cons consultation with Jantada and we planned it one year before, but we couldn't do it because of pandemic. And uh, so to Jantada, inspire us always. Thank Murli you. Sir is holding up a very beautiful yeah. picture. Yeah, <laughs> that is true. Young Jantada. Thank you. That's very special. You know, it's a very important very part special, of the archive that uh, we must make and we must keep for future. Ah, absolutely, absolutely. Yes. All speakers to Xenia, Murli, Murli, is showing everybody. Us the date. Thank you, thank you, Xenia. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, Jadi Babu. Thank you, Vasudara. Thank wonderful, you. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you, thank wonderful. you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you very thank much, and congratulations. Thank you very much, Thank you. Yes, thank you. All thank the you. love, all the love, you, you and.